What's going on, everyone? Welcome back to Better Biomed. Folks, I get messages every single day about problems with your medical equipment and looking for solutions, and I do my absolute best to get you guys the answers. And in this case, I have a large hospital system here in Texas who are implementing a whole new fleet of defibrillators, and they looked out to me to see if I can get them an answer on correct electrical safety testing for these new defibrillators. And I do have answers for you, but I can do something even better. I reached out to my friends over at Renew Biomedical and MME. They're the industry leaders for EMT equipment around the entire country. And since they're some of the leaders in servicing and sales, who better to give the answer than my friends over at Renew Biomedical? So here they are. Let's see electrical safety on defibrillators. Hey everyone, I'm Josh Hertzka. I'm a certified CBET here at Renew Biomedical. We are a full service medical repair depot and I'm one of their biomed techs, specifically a BMET too. So what we're gonna do today is we're gonna actually start an electrical safety test on this R series right here. So the first thing we're gonna need is we're gonna need a multimeter. What I like to do is I like to go ahead and set it to resistance and we're gonna test the paddle well connection to make sure the internal resistance is measuring adequately according to OEM standards. So I'll take these paddle wells and open them up. I'll go ahead and put one side on each terminal. And right now I'm measuring 0.2 ohms, so we are good. Usually I don't see them go past 0.5. And from there, I can actually put this multimeter away. I'll no longer need it. And I'm gonna go ahead and actually disconnect my paddles as well. Typically with paddles, I like to go ahead and just test them by putting the paddles together and actually seeing that in ECG wavelength. Let's go ahead and walk through that. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna go ahead and turn on the monitor. I'm gonna go ahead and put these back here and I'm going to connect my cable to the paddle. So I will connect it. I'm gonna ensure that we have paddles connected here and then I can see a solid wavelength right here showing that there is continuity between the two points. And another thing I like to check is I will also put the paddles together and I should verify the same as well. And it should zero out the heart rhythm and it looks like we're good. So I'm gonna actually go ahead and continue to put my paddles away and disconnect my cable. And we're gonna go ahead and get ready to set this up to our electrical safety analyzer. So with our electrical safety analyzer, we're gonna go ahead and make sure it's plugged up to a solid grounded circuit, such as a power strip or the wall outlet. And I'm gonna go ahead and plug it up here, make sure our analyzer can go ahead and turn on. First thing I like to always make sure is the standard is selected to according to region that we're going to be working in. We're in the United States, so I'm gonna be doing the IEC 60601 and ANSI slash Amy ES60601-1 standards. So I've got my, I've already verified my standards that I'm gonna be testing with. I'm gonna go ahead and start setting up my unit to be plugged up to be tested. So what I'm gonna need is a lead cable with an alligator clip, and I'm going to plug it into my two wire connection here, and I'm going to go ahead and connect it to the back right here where this grounding lug is. So I'm gonna go ahead, plug up my grounding lug, and I'm also gonna get a hospital graded hospital cord. There should be a green dot somewhere indicating on the power cable where we're gonna be testing. So I'm gonna undo this cable and we're gonna plug it up to our unit into the, the DUT port or the device under test port. We'll plug it up there, and I'm just going to plug this into the unit now. So I'll plug it up. I'm going to ensure that I also have my one-step cable plugged up both to the ECG port and the multifunction cable port, or the MFC port. Another thing I'm also going to check as we continue on kind of do our through our setup is I'm going to make sure I've got my three leads. I'm going to plug it up to my one-step, and we're going to go ahead and connect it to the proper leads. Since we're just doing three lead, it'll be the right arm, the left arm, and the left leg. And right now, that's how my setup is going to be. 
first one I like to always test is our resistance. This is gonna test the resistance of this power cable that we have for our device under test port to our unit that's gonna be device under testing. I'm gonna go ahead and make sure that we have the unit set to monitor or just in the on position. And according to Amy's standards, we should be measuring below 500 milli ohms. I've got 0.15 um, ohms. So if we do the conversion, that is gonna be less than 500 milli ohms. So we're within compliance there. And we're gonna go ahead and go to testing our microamps. So I'm gonna switch it over to leakage. I'm gonna make sure my polarity is turned on. And then I'm going to ensure just that everything is connected. I am on pads. I'm actually gonna to switch to leads soon. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that preemptively. Right now, what I'm doing right here is we can see that when I did switch to microamps and turn the polarity on, we can actually see that the indicator light turns orange, indicating that it's charging this battery and that the battery light is also on. Right now I'm measuring 129 microamps under normal conditions, so we're passing. That should be below 500 microamps, according to Amy's standards. Next thing I'm going to go ahead and test is our enclosure leakage. The first one was our earth leakage directly. The next is gonna be the enclosure. So I'm going to open up our earth to from the device under test to now just be circuited to the device itself. So this is gonna make sure that the internal leakage is passable and it actually can pass standards. So with that open earth, I'm actually measuring from that ground lug 129.8 microamps. So we're passing again since it's less than 500. One of the final tests I do on the R series with my leakage testing is I'll go to our applied part testing, which would be our three leads selection that we talked about earlier. So I will select three leads, go ahead and select it. I will make sure that I'm in normal conditions of operation. So that would be normal polarity, a closed neutral and a closed earth. And I'm gonna go ahead and make sure that the AC and DC circuit are combined together in their metrics. And so right now what I'm measuring on here and we can see I have a solid line on my ECG. I'm on limb lead one currently. So I can see that I have continuity and with that continuity, I'm measuring 0.2 microamps. So that's passing within normal conditions. Normal condition states that it should be less than 10 microamps. Typically, if I can see it below one microamp, I know it's an immediate pass, but for sake of this demonstration, I'm gonna continue on with my testing. What I'll do is I'll open up our earth to simulate a fault. And I can see that I'm measuring 6.5 microamps. So again, we're passing since we're below 10, but with single fault conditions, the um, limit is actually 50 microamps. So what we're going to do is we're gonna continue on with our testing because we're seeing that we're passing below that 50 mark. So I'm gonna go ahead and apply ma mains on the applied parts. So I'm just sending a little bit of current from my test through these lead cables to the unit to see if you can filter that out. Because as the analog board inside this converts analog to digital, it's crucial that that excess filtration and excess current is filtered out, especially with ECG monitoring for critical patients. So what I'm gonna do is make sure my polarity is normal and I'm going to apply the voltage testing now. We can actually see slight current actually on the monitor show through here. And what I've got is 15.2 microamps. So I'm actually passing again. So we're still below that 50 microamp circuit fault. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna test it again to apply a reverse voltage. Okay. So we'll see the amplitude show up again here and we're measuring about the same at 15.6 microamps. So we're passing again. That would usually conclude my testing with this unit with electrical safety testing. I hope this helps you guys out as we continue to try to serve others and actually help out those in our communities, especially those that are in critical patient care. That was an excellent video, folks, and I'm so happy on short notice that the folks over at Renew were able to get me these videos so I can get you guys the correct answers. Now, if you need any assistance with service, sales, and support of any EMT equipment, reach out to them. I'll leave their contact info in the video description down below, and they'll be happy to answer any questions you have. But folks, if you have other items that you would like me to try and get you some correct answers on, 
just go ahead and let me know down in the comments. I do read all the comments and I will reach out to the actual industry experts and we'll see if we can do videos like this to get you the answers that you deserve. Thanks for watching guys. I'm here to help you guys with any of your test equipment needs, whether you need a quote or you just have a question about functionality, it's no problem. Just go ahead and shoot me an email at jbarber at bcgroupinternational.com or justin at betterbiomed.com. It's my pleasure to help you.